Welcome to another Eidolon video. Today I'm going to be looking into sampling um, and how this works for all skills, but I'm going to focus on wood cutting just for today. The main reason being wood cutting is probably the highest sample you're going to get, which is going to help you most in the end game. Now before I get started, please feel free to share, like and subscribe. I really need your help. Let's get into it. Okay, so why do samples matter? The main reason is that once you reach world 3, you're going to build yourself an atom collider at some point. Now, the, the thing this is going to do is it's going to take excess resources, turn them into atoms, and when, as you go further into alchemy, you're going to use those atoms to level up things that are just too expensive. This can also be used on bubbles that have a really rare resource that's hard to come by, so atoms become very, very important uh, towards the end game. You need to get your sample rate up, and you need to get it up quickly. Okay, so for this guide, I'm going to focus on things that you actively have to equip. Okay, anything that is passive, I'm going to ignore. The reason being is that you will you will just grow those over time. So, um, and if, if I went through into every passive thing needed, this video would be hours long because there's just so many mechanics at this point. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is make sure that your gear is leveled up as much as possible. And what I mean is, again, we're going to look at it from the chopping side of you, that you've got the most powerful axe and you've used the highest tier world stone that you can. Up to you if you want to use the ones that gamble. I like to play it safe. So for me, I use the world five stones and I've got a dread low axe. Now, also on top of that, there are certain gears that you can craft that will increase your efficiency. So for chopping, you've got the stump prop, which you can get from a quest or you've got the witch hat. The, now, obviously the witch hat you can craft, which means that you can roll it for extra stats. Um, if you were to make craft it using a archer, you've also got bleach designer woad patch um, pants, which again is just going to give you a little bit more efficiency, furled robes, and the um, logger heels that you can upgrade into the fibrous uh, footings. So make sure you have as many of these as possible, as many as you're capable of crafting, and make sure they've had their stones attached to them to upgrade them to the best possible chance going. Okay, so when it comes to alchemy, the active bubble you're going to want to run is the one that gives you multi-chance for your skill. So for chopping, we're going to use Molto Logo. What this can cap out is 300%. That means that when this is equipped, you can get up to three times more logs than what you would normally get. Okay, this is a huge buff and will help your sampling go up through the roof. Definitely don't sleep on this. Another thing is, remember earlier I said about you're going to need atoms in endgame? This bubble is probably going to use atoms to max out. So the quicker you get your samples up, the quicker you get your atoms, the quicker you can increase your samples. It's a loop, very much a feedback loop. Okay, next we're going to look into skills. Now, some classes, such as the mages, in their skill set will have an active skill that they can use to increase their, eff eff their efficiency. Now, the main one here is log on logs. Okay, make sure you activate this before you take your sample. And what this will do is it will increase again the amount of logs that you get per chop. It can get some crazy numbers with this. Like I've seen my samples triple the size, quadruple the size. Do not sleep on this. What I recommend is actually with your library, max out this book as quickly as possible on every mage you have. The reason being is that then you'll be able to get more atoms and upgrade things quicker and more efficient. Okay, next would be your cards. And I recommend that you kind of have two different loadouts. So I have as a minimum one loadout for fighting, one loadout for skilling. Your cards are going to change depending on where you are in the game. Okay, so to begin with, before you unlock infinite star signs, your cards are going to really want to focus on chopping speed. So you're going to be looking at potty roll cards, wispy lumbar, and cube logs. These will help with your chopping speed, and the more, again, the quicker you can get that chopping speed, the bigger gains you're going to see. Now, after that, I tend to focus on efficiency, which is going to be things like your bleach logs and your alien hive. And then finally, if you have space, put in some chopping away gains. Uh, things like choppy log and the tundra logs. This is where things get a bit different, though, because there is a caveat to how this is. You need to look at your um, efficiency bar, so click the AFK button and see whether you're close to the next level or not quite. Now, if you are nowhere near going up in efficiency, so going up into the next multiplier, you may want to focus more on chopping away gains. 
Whereas if you are close to it, you may want to focus more on, a on your efficiency because you want to get as high a multi as possible. All right. If you can reach the next the next multi, go for it. Otherwise, drop them efficiency cards to as low as possible and stack as much away gains because at that point the away gains are going to be more beneficial. For the card bonus, you're going to choose between the easy resource set, which is going to increase your efficiency, or the hard resource set, which is going to give you AFK gains, similar to what I've said in the past. If you need the efficiency to reach the next multi, go for it. If you're way away from a multi and you're never going to hit it, go for the hard resource instead to get that increased AFK rate. Now, remember to equip food. Some of these are found for events, so you might not have them at this point. But um, for chopping, for example, there's one you can craft in the saucy log fries. That's going to increase your speed again. And Chognog, which is an event one, will also increase your speed. Now, the good thing about this is because we're sampling, you don't need to worry about whether these are going to be used or not. Because in essence, you're going to hit the object once, say the tree, you're going to hit sample, and you're going to stop. The item won't get used, but you'll get a huge buff from that speed. Next, we're going to look at star signs. And this again has kind of a two-pronged approach to it. So the first one is if you've already got 300% multi-chance, then you're really going to want to just stack skill AFK gain. You can do this with the big comatose, the OG skiller, and um, what's the other one that you run? Uh, comatose major. Okay, they're going to increase your skill, they're going to increase your um, AFK rate, which is going to help. Remember, if you've got chips for this, you can double your star signs that are equipped, even if you've got them on infinite star signs. So, they can go up to twice as much, which is going to help push that little bit more. If you don't have max multi, then you're probably going to want to put on hipster logger instead. It's going to give you 20% multi log chance, as well as 5% chopping efficiency. So, um, really depends upon where you are with that as to which way you want to go down it. Again, all skills will have similar things just for their individual character category. Next we have obols. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want silver obols for your skill in all of your circle slots. Okay, this should give you two skill power in them plus two base stats of the relevant. So for chopping, for example, it's going to give you two wisdom. You can roll these to increase the wisdom stat on it. It will give you a slight buff. That's up to you if you want to do that. In your gold square slots, you're going to use the same, the gold skilling obol. Um, I have gone over this in more detail in a previous video, but I'll give you a quick overview. For your um, for your hexagon obol, your platinum one, you're going to want the slush the slush obol drop from the world four mini boss that you spawn in, or you can get it in the world uh, world three mini boss. Sorry. Or you can get it in the World 3 Colosseum. Um, it's very, very good. It comes with a base 3% efficiency. However, you can increase, you can re-roll that to get 4%. If you haven't reached that far yet, you can use the Platinum version of your Skilling Obol. However, it's not as good. Um, and you're going to be able to kill Slushies quite quickly. And for the Dementia, the optimum would be the Divine Obol coming from Cattle Crook, which is a World 5 boss. However, I understand that is quite late game, so for your early players, you're going to want to upgrade your skilling obol all the way up to Dementia, or Sparkle, whichever way you want to call it. That's quite a um, quite a task to do early game, so you might just want to opt out of that to begin with, um, because you're going to need a lot of obols, and you're going to need to merge them a lot. So, um, that's the way. You're going to want two sets. So you're going to want a set on your personal obols, and a set in your um, your team obols, which means you're going to need a lot of obols. Okay, what you can do with help storage is you can actually leave these on a certain character who you're not pushing with, for example, um, just so then you can keep up with that storage space. But yeah, ideally, you want a set of obols on both your team and your individual. So get grinding for your trophy. There is no better than the idle skiller. However, if you haven't played idle skilling and cleared all of the maps, which can be slightly painful, um, you might want to consider just using Blunder Hero. You can get that from completing all the quests in World 1 on a single character, so it's fairly easy to get hold of once you get further into the game, and that's going to give you a 3% skill gain. 
Um, the idle skiller one will actually give you 15% skill efficiency, which is generally better. Um, but again, it's just a bit more painful to get hold of, so sometimes it's worth going for the blunder hill. Okay, so for your keychains, you're going to need to roll a lot of tier 3 keychains to get the best possible. Now what you're looking for is AFK gain rate or all skill speed. Both of them drop on tier 3. You can get two stats on a keychain, so there is potential for you to get two AFK stats, two skill stats, or a mixture of the two. Okay, they're going to really, really help you the most. Speed, obviously I favour to begin with, however once you cap speed you're going to more want to focus on AFK. So it's going to depend upon where you are in the game. Um, these can also be doubled with chips, so we'll look into that next. So for prayers we're going to want three main things. The first one is skill dimwit. This is going to drop your skill XP but we don't care about that for sampling. It's going to push up your skill efficiency, it's a massive gain. Next we're going to go Zerg Rushagen. This is going to give you AFK gain rate. Again, it's going to drop your carry capacity, but we don't care because we're sampling. And the third one that's really important is the Royal Sampler. Now, this one is going to increase your sample size. Sample size caps at 90%. Unless you're very late game, at the minute it's quite hard to reach 90% without using this prayer. This prayer comes with a caveat that if you are to remove it, you will lose your samples. It drops your XP gain slightly, but I'll be honest with you, the amount you're going to gain from the samples is way worth that penalty. So. I suggest always having this equipped. For your World 5 Divinities, if you've unlocked them, you're going to want to connect every single person to the Go Gohara. This is going to give you more AFK gains for all of your characters and its stacks. So um, there's potential here. You can get a maximum of 5% AFK. With all 10 characters, that would be 50% extra AFK. It's a huge buff. And now that you've got the ability to unlink from Divinities twice in a week, you can happily change everyone to go and then put them back into your normal setup, whether that involves the elephant, um, whether that involves the bunny, you know, you, you can you can play around with it quite comfortably. So uh, make sure everyone's set to go. Next, we have any sort of premium items that you might have left over. Um, there is one which you can use, which you can earn in game still, but these are your capes and your hats. So for the premium hat, you're probably going to want to be using the Christmas Snoozy. Now this is time limited. The pack does roll around on a rotation, so you might be able to get it in the future if you don't have it. Um, for the cape, you're going to be looking at the giant star flower. This is retired. It was Halloween event, uh, Valentine's Day event only. Don't know if that will come back. We're yet to see. Uh, the one which you might be able to get is angel wings. This will give you an 11% AFK gain. This rotates throughout the gem the gem store, so um, again, if you're lucky, it might be there. Uh, and the final one is the Gilded Ethorns Tusks, which dropped from um, the Nightmare version of Ethorns, the second World 2 boss. These will give 10% skill efficiency. Now, these ones can be farmed if you have enough tickets, uh, sorry, keys. You can only get like 10 keys a day, so you can't run this that often, but if you get lucky with a high drop rate, you might be able to get this. Um, so that's kind of where you want to go with your with your premium slots. There isn't really anything you can put in the name tag as of now. There are things that can, if you're using fishing, there is one that will increase your fishing efficiency, but for all the other skills, there isn't anything at the minute. You can increase skill XP, but we don't really care about that for sample size. Also, if you aren't at a point where you can cover the whole of your lab with minimal characters, um, make sure that you've got as many of the green gems as possible. Well, you really want to max out your green gems. The one to get hold of though is the Emerald Navi. This will give you high base efficiency and 10% uh, skilling speed. This gets doubled if you can get all, all five of the green gems, so definitely aim for that if you can. Um, again, this isn't going to be as, as important as you get further into the game. Chips is a bit of a weird one because you can only buy specific ones when they roll into the weekly shop. So it depends whether you're lucky or not. There are guides online, there are Excel sheets where people have figured out the pattern, they know what's coming next, and you can pre-warn yourself. Now, the ones which are super important to use is Conductive Processor. That's going to give you 15% skilling AFK. You can only equip one per character, so make sure you've got that. Next, you're going to want Skill Road Nano Chip. That's going to double your active star signs. I mentioned that earlier. You're also going to want Silk Road Motherboard if you can get it, which doubles your trophy. 
and you're gonna want Silk Road software. This doubles the stats in your upper keychain. So the first keychain slot you've got, put your best one in there, okay? You might wanna run Silk Road processor if you've got um, the Persephone's flowers. The reason being that gives you 15% AFK, the Silk Road processor will double that. So you're now running 30% AFK. When it comes to your cards, put your two best cards in the top left and the bottom right. And the reason for that is the Omega Nano chip and the Omega Mother Motherboard will double both of those. Now, if you don't have all of those, you're missing some of them, okay? There are some other ones that will work. So Galvanic Motherboard and Galvanic Processor will both increase your efficiency, okay? Motherboard works by a percentage of total, Processor increases base efficiency, which means that base efficiency gets scaled up by all of the other multipliers you've attached to it. Um, depending on where you are in the game, processor will outperform motherboard and vice versa. So you might have to do a little bit of tinkering around, see what chips you have available. But they're your skilling chips. They're gonna double so many things that you're just gonna get more games. Finally, make sure your Void Walker, Maestro, whatever you may have, has the right hand of learning equipped and leveled up. Make sure his level is above your level in the current skill and you will get a massive efficiency gain. Again, I've covered this in a previous video, so go check that if you wanna know more. Okay, so that's kind of a rundown of everything that you're gonna to need to change before um, you take your sample size. Now, um, when it comes to actually taking your sample size, there are a few quality of life updates that will make it much, much easier and uh, less, so you have to do it, you need less moving around, less micromanaging. So I'm gonna quickly go through those and just give you an idea of what it is. Um, some of these are a bit controversial, but we're gonna do it anyway. So um, the first one is with your, uh, with, you can get infinite star signs through the rift. What this is gonna do is it means that you don't have to have star signs equipped to get the bonus from them. Now, if you are using a doubler, it will map what you've got equipped. If you don't have the doubler chip, you can ignore this completely. The next one is gonna be the active bubble from the alchemy. Now, this is where it gets, starts getting a bit controversial because this is where it gets a bit pay to win. Um, if you're lucky enough to have unlocked the sheepy pet, you do not need to do this because it will automatically have all big bubbles equipped at all times. We're about to step into the really, really controversial. Now, when it comes to gods and lab, you can completely ignore this if you have a dupe pet. I'm not telling you to spend to get a dupe pet, but if you have, are lucky enough to get one on one of your free pulls, or you know you're happy to spend a little bit and you've got dupe, you can ignore this part completely. So. With that, that takes out a huge chunk of the time and the micromanaging that you need to do to sample effectively. Um, with do, it also means you don't have to reset your gods afterwards because you've got them all unlocked. Also through the Rift, um, you can get passive cards. What this is gonna do is it changes all of your skill cards either as soon as you unlock them to a passive, which means you don't need them in your skilling set anymore. With that out of the way, you can instead start changing your, your card setup from skilling to base um, to base stats. So if in the chopping, you're gonna use base wisdom. Um, you can also then focus on your AFK gains. So they're gonna become a much more important thing. And the all efficiency cards. So um, chaotic um, troll basically becomes even more powerful because you've already got every other card equipped um that all bonuses do not equip so they don't, they don't become passive um so you will still need to do them okay so i mentioned uh snapshotting but what actually is that so what it means is when you enter a screen <clears throat> sometimes certain stats are calculated and they stay the same now for this this really really occurs for chopping and mining okay your hp and your mp and the way that they affect your stats, your, your efficiency, is calculated on entry into a map. So what you can do is you can actually have a card set that is aimed at increasing your HP if you're mining, 
and your MP if you're chopping. You wear that when you enter into the room. You then change to your efficiency um, or AFK card set and it snapshots your efficiency at the higher level than what it should be. This will help you to increase your sampling. Some people say it can increase by up to 10% doing this, so it is definitely worth mastering this. And in my opinion, probably worth buying a third card set, just so you don't have to swap around your cards every time you want to sample. So for one quick final overview, the things you're going to need to make sure that you've changed are your gear, your premium items, your gods, your alchemy bubble, your skills, make sure your maestro is on the right skill set, your labs, your star signs and your chips. It's a lot to remember, but this video is here to help you if you forget. Okay, that's all I've got for you for the active checks to do before sampling. Hopefully if you follow this video along before you do any sampling and you imitate the steps but change them based around the skill you are using, you'll optimize your sample sizes, which will increase your gains and your growth. If you found this video useful in any way, shape or form, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, you've been amazing. Take care.